Hi, I'm Dawn and this is where Shabby Meets Bling. Um, tonight I'm going to do something that I promised that I would do and that is to show rusting techniques. And uh, one of them is a natural process and the other faux are faux. Faux. Four are faux. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> Try that one. The other four for rusting. <laughs> They're not real. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> rusting technique one, natural rust. Going to be creating a rust finish on this little metal bucket. I am giving it a light, a light sanding and I'm using a wet sanding block to do so. The sanding block is dry though, so keep that in mind. I only need two ingredients to create my natural rust, and that is vinegar, just a distilled vinegar, and salt, table salt. That's all you need. You can apply your vinegar in a couple different ways. In this application, I'm just using a brush an old brush and I, this is my rusting brush and I put on a layer of vinegar and I coat the entire thing in salt. You can use as much or as little as you want and it does make a difference in the final outcome of the product. And now I'm just going to set it in my rusting bucket because I have rusting buckets and we'll check it later. And until then, let's check one of my other rusting buckets. These are cookie cutters, just metal cookie cutters. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna make something pretty cool out of this. And you can see the actual patina, that rust, natural rust patina that I have given these little cookie cutters. This takes time, this process takes time. It's a natural occurrence, this rusting. So if you're in a hurry, you're gonna wanna try one of the other techniques that I use but this gives you the most honest, real look of rust because it's real rust. Let's give a check on our pail. There she is. And this is about, oh, four or five days in and it is getting hard. That salt is getting hard. This look is really, really cool if you're doing a seaside look. I've used this in um, ocean and beach decor. It looks amazing. I am giving my little bucket another coat of vinegar and salt and you notice this time I am spraying. This is a process that takes a while so be prepared to wait. Now, now I'm taking a couple of little brass wall planters and I am going to give them a natural patina. And this is a beautiful look, simply beautiful still using vinegar and salt. This is gonna give us that beautiful patina, you know, that green, that beautiful verde green that that copper and brass get over time. Beautiful. There are retail solutions that you can buy to apply and they're very expensive and salt and vinegar are not. Check this out. This is just overnight and it's already getting that beautiful green finish. I will apply more salt, and vinegar and let it sit. Rusting technique two, using just paint. For demonstration purposes, I have prepped a piece of corrugated just with some two shades of green. And now I'm coming in with all three of those other colors. My uh, red primer, my brown and my dark brown. And I'm alternating and I am just like, I'm making the can almost spit. <laughs> spit on whatever it is you're painting and in this case the corrugated and you're going to alternate and it's, and embrace those little globs those little dots because that looks like rust starting and you just need to keep mixing the different paints and if you get too much in one area or you want to tone it down use whatever base coat you started with this is a another project that i did the faux rusting technique with paint only on. And you can really see how this looks like rust. It's a beautiful look and it's quick and it's really easy. It just takes some practice to get your blending down, but practice on something you really don't care about. 
And that's technique two with paint only. Technique three, paint in salt. This is also super, super simple. Uh, all you need to do is take, you can either use all three of those colors I showed you in the previous technique, or just two, as long as you use the red primer and you give everything a spray mixing the two. Then you come back while wet, the paint must be wet, and you lightly sprinkle some salt. Simple, sprinkle salt as much as you want, as little as you want, you get the look you want by depending on how much salt you add. Then you come back and you spray your combination of paints over top of this. You're basically encapsulating the salt within the paint itself. If you want to preserve the look, spray it with a matte finish. I used both of those last two techniques in this project. I'll leave the link in the description box below. Technique four, vinegar, salt, and stain. This technique starts just like our very first one. I am taking my wet sanding block, dry, <laughs> dry, but it is a wet sanding block. And I am lightly scruffing up my ribbon. And in this case, I am wrapping my uh, sanding block with a really fine sandpaper as well. I have already applied my vinegar and salt and then on to the staining. You can decide the color of stain you're going to use. I'm just using kind of a brown. Um, you can use a red, more of a like for a redwood, that type of thing. But I feel like it's almost too red to, to mimic, but you use what you want. And I am just applying it with my, my brush and I'm dabbing so that I don't take all the salt off. Keep in mind, I've let the ribbon with the salt and vinegar sit in the sun for a couple of days. So it's, it's pretty hard. And I'm just blending my stain into that salt finish. Once again, I've let the ribbon dry after I applied my stain finish for a couple of days. Once again, in the sun until it got hard, you can put it in a really dry area too. And now I'm just kind of scruffing off a little bit of the salt mixture where I don't want it. I don't want this to be extremely rusted. I just want it like it just started to rust, just a little bit. Like she's not super old, <laughs> but uh, she's getting there. Here you see a before and after. And here it is applied. I use this technique in this project. I'll leave the link in the description box below. Technique five, paint, salt, and stain. Using this color of paint and this color of paint, it's two different tones of gray and they are satin and a flat. I have already given a base coat to this chair. Now I'm coming in and I'm going to use both paints off and on, one then the other, one then the other, and I'm going to apply my salt while the paint is wet. I've used gray because I'm trying to make this look like a metal chair, and I'm being very strategic about where I'm putting the salt. I'm not cover covering the entire chair. I'm hitting and missing areas so that it looks more natural, like this occurred naturally. I shake off any salt that hasn't been captured in the paint and I come back with my paint again in areas that I want to build up more salt, more rust. Just like in the other techniques, add as much salt as you want. I, you'll achieve a different look depending on how much you use. Make sure you cover all areas that are going to be visible. And after our paint and salt combo has dried thoroughly, then we come back in and we stain. And we stain the entire chair. Take your brush with your stain and, and rub it in. You can use circular motions, almost like you're doing a stencil. 
and you can dab, but make sure you cover the entire chair because that's very important to achieve the actual rusting color that we want to achieve. This is what it looks like after we have stained. And once again, you're going to let it dry thoroughly. Hours, you want it to dry thoroughly. <laughs> and once dry, you're gonna come back again and you're gonna encapsulate the entire chair in both of those colors that we used previously, both paints. You come in and you blend those two, but you're gonna cover everything. Here you can see what it looks like after we've come back with those two different paints and completely covered the salt and stain finish. You can see it just looks like kind of a, a metal chair that's bubbling and beginning to rust but now we're gonna enhance that look. Once completely dry, we sand. We sand and we sand and we sand. And what you're doing is you are revealing that, that stain that's just below the surface of the paint. And as you're sanding, you're kind of creating almost like a paste. You will ruin <laughs> your sanding block i i'm telling you because the heat is gonna combine the friction to create that lovely lovely patina and you can see it developing right before your eyes as you sand it's absolutely gorgeous in a very old rusty way <laughs> super fabulous and that's our fifth and final rusting technique. I use this technique in this project. I'll leave the link in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it with your family and friends. You can follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe. You'll be helping support the channel by subscribing and click that bell. That way you'll get notifications of all of my upcoming videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did and you try this, let me know how it went. Leave me a note in the comment section or just say hi. I love hearing from you. But for now, this is Dawn with Shabby Meets Bling. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.